But like him talking about like, oh, you got to go in, you know, standing up. Da -da -da -da. Bro, he's in, he's in PC. Like yeah. what he said, like he's somewhere in prison where he can make a podcast. Okay. Like we'll put it that way. He, he has like a recording studio. He is 100% not on the main line at all. Yeah. Like, so, okay. Suge Knight. Let's look at this thing. So, mm -hmm. all right. So this, I find this absolutely hilarious. Suge Knight warns Diddy his life's in danger during a jailhouse call. They're going to get you if they can. And I was like, wait, he called Diddy? Because, like, they are they were enemies, obviously. And uh, so I look into this thing and find out that uh, Suge Knight has a podcast. Called Collect Call. Called Collect that call. is so, I like that. <laughs> I need, Dude, I'm going to listen to it. Yeah. This is the best thing that could ever happen to it right here. Uh, he hails from a California state prison where he's serving a 28-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter. What's the difference between voluntary manslaughter and murder? So it's like a okay. So like what happened in his case? Is it the premeditated case, part? No, it's if you intend to kill someone. Like so, if you are in a heated argument and someone does something and you take out a gun and shoot them, that's second degree murder because you intended to shoot them and kill them, but you didn't like plan it out mm -hmm. way in advance. In his case, he got in an argument with some guys and he drove his truck out of there and like intentionally hit some guys. And then mm. he ended up running over a guy and he killed him, who actually was one of his friends. It was like a. So he didn't mean to kill someone like you basically, as far as I understand it, like voluntary manslaughter is something like that, where it's like, like you voluntarily did the thing and it happened to kill someone. But that yes, wasn't your intention. Exactly. Got it's it. not like shooting him with a gun. It's like you right. meant you meant to like you meant to hit them with the car. Yeah. But you didn't intend to kill them. Yeah, you, you know. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Uh, and and I, again, if there's any lawyers listening to this and that's completely Correct us, wrong, please. like just tell me in the comments because I'm not pretending to be a lawyer. But uh, that makes sense. Um. Anyway, but this is the funniest thing ever. Okay, so check this out. Suge Knight kicked off the clip, praying for Diddy's kids before he blasted the singer for giving the culture of hip hop a bad image. That's the part that I laughed at. I'm like, Suge fucking Knight. Is saying that like, oh, Diddy gave him a bad image. That's the most ludicrous thing ever. Suge Knight was like the biggest gangster ever who went around and like, I mean, he fucking beat the shit out of everybody, slapped everybody, whatever. And then Gabrielle's all, yeah, but what's Diddy charged with? And I'm like, oh, yeah, trafficking yeah. and sex crimes shit. A little bit different. Yeah. I mean, I would assume in that culture and in that community. Right? And then so actually I... I bet you that that is his point about and this. And especially if any of, I, I don't know what the actual allegations are against Diddy, but especially well, if any you. of it's like minors, like there it's, it's implied for sure. I would um, imagine that's not looked yeah, well upon for sure. But so, so Suge said, I'll tell you what Puffy, your life is in danger. Cause you know, the secrets who's involved in that little secret room you guys are participating in. Uh, he said, they're going to get you if they can. I think, I actually think right there he's referencing like the like elites, you know, like kind of like the Epstein thing where he's got tapes on everybody or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I I do agree with you that when he said uh, giving the culture of hip hop a bad image is probably yeah, it's probably about the sex mm -hmm. trafficking stuff for because sure. Because that's I mean, you know, the death row yeah, guys, murdering people, the death row, albeit guys. bad, I don't think gets you a bad reputation in that community. No. Yeah. They're I mean, they're gangsters for sure. But like I never I mean, the only the only sex thing that anyone ever got charged with was the Tupac thing. And that was a complete fucking lie. Like the thing that Tupac, you know, because Tupac got sent to jail over a, a sexual assault. He didn't even participate in. There was like some other guys and, you know, he was famous and there and like it's like that's been confirmed many many times that like he didn't do anything and he got locked up for it so suge knight encouraged diddy to turn himself over to authorities as knight did that following the hit and run in 2015 which resulted in the death of terry carter i turned myself in sometimes you got to face the music that's most of the time uh he took a moment to give diddy some real advice if he ends up behind bars you got to make a decision when you go to prison you're going to be standing up pissing or squatting sitting down pissing Knight advised him to take the first option. And that means uh, don't let anybody take anything from you. You know, like he's like, uh, they're going to test you right when you get in there and you have to stand up for yourself or else, you know, there's yeah. only two ways to stay safe. Someone protects you or you protect yourself. And if you take protection, well, I mean, I guess technically you group up with guys, you click up and that protects you, but that's like the stand up. I will be violent. I will fucking carry drugs around all this dumb fucking 
prison language prison gang bullshit like yeah. you know it's i mean it's different it's state to state i've watched enough of these documentaries talked to enough guys that i know like california you do not want to go to fucking prison in california dude there you're just like you're mm-hmm. going to be hanging out with the white supremacy if you're a white dude you're gonna be in with the woods white supremacist everybody and like you're gonna be doing dirt or else you're gonna have to go to you know um uh what do you call it uh protective custody pc mm-hmm. it's like if you're out on the yard with these guys it's like they you're ask, with a crew they yeah. ask you to do something you have to do it it's like you're like dude, that sounds awful yeah you're like dude i'm here for fucking two years on a whatever they're all yeah but we need you to do this you're all, if i get caught doing that i'm gonna get 10 years or more there I hear, I've heard so many stories about guys who went in to a California prison for things that were like sometimes even 18 months. They end up getting a life sentence because they of what they did while they were in because so, they had mm-hmm. to. Yeah. You know, like, well, in you hindsight, know. they should have just gone to PC like people think of going like because going to PC, basically you like go in and you I don't know, sometimes you have to rat on people or whatever. But like. And then you go to protective custody with all the child molesters and, you know, and other. Are you people. like actually safe in there, though? Oh, in PC. Yeah. yeah. There's no violence in PC. Hmm. Usually like because at least as why I is this all glitchy over here? Uh, I don't know. It does that, but it's it's I'm sure it's fine. Usually yeah. it's fine. Like when you actually watch it. Um, but yeah, as I understand it in PC, uh, you are safe. You know, we're like because uh, I think you could just anyone who has been in prison share your experience in the comments yeah because i think if you fight in pc you can get kicked out of pc and so it's like in which case you go to solitary permanently or yeah. uh i mean if they put you back on the yard you get killed for sure or you know it's crazy i heard this one guy's podcast um where he was he's with the mexicans i can't remember if he was northerners or southerners but it, the nortenos or the serenios correct Aren't you uh, impressed with my gang knowledge? So if if you know this answer, I will be very impressed. Oh, quiz me. Okay, so the Southerners have, there's, there are four, there are like four or five main prison gangs. Okay. And one of the, like, so the Norteños roll up to one of them and the Serenios roll up to another one. What are those? Ooh. I feel like I'll know them if you say them, but I, I, I don't know them off the top of my head. Southerners roll up to the Mexican mafia and the Norteños roll up to the uh, northern structure, the uh, Nuestra Familia. I did know those names. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have known who was who, though. But I did know those names. Yeah. So I've been hanging out with you for too long. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I can't remember exactly. But like, you know, the way it's most of the violence in prison or a lot of it is internal. Like it's your own, it's your own people, right. you know, because they click up and well, then they like, create their own societies inside. Like it's, it's its own they take world. Out, they take out their own garbage. So like if something happens and a, a lot of times another, like with someone, like let's say it's a Sereno does gets to some gang or I'm sorry, uh, some drug debt or something and to a black guy, mm-hmm. actually usually a Sereno actually would, I'm saying that's so the black guys are with the Northern structure. The white guys are with the Mexican mafia okay. and like they, they, you would not like, they would never like do anything together outside. Like the blacks are with the Northern structure. The whites are with the Southerners and the, there's no mixing at all. Like okay. fucking none in California. Jesse's watched quite a few documentaries. And I know some guys that like, it, it's like if dude, if you, if someone, if a white dude in a California prison, happen to be sitting at a table like next to a table that a black dude was at and black dude's like i don't want this granola bar and the white dude's all oh i'm hungry i'll take it you're in big trouble they'll stab him yikes they'll stab him for that for just so weird yeah it's that's what my point it's the weirdest yeah dumbest shit ever that's but why it's, but it is but it's it's actually from a psychology standpoint completely understandable because especially those that are doing life or near life sentences that world of prison is their entire world so they have to create social constructs and it's a bunch of incarcerated people who might not be the brightest crayons in the box or whatever i know some of them are very 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 smart but they're but they create they have to create something and it doesn't necessarily have to make sense to us but as long as they all understand how it's run yeah it's it it kind of keeps peace even though it's disastrous it it's but it's designed to keep peace yes it doesn't in most cases but like so okay so like so that's an example of like how you think society and cultures have to organize themselves it's like written in our dna so if that's their world it's going to happen that's exactly what it is and they're like you know it's like white guys 
are yeah. with white guys. You know, black guys yeah. are with black guys. You match that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're like, well, who the cares Me- if we have anything else in common? Right. Yeah. The northern Mexicans are farmers and the southern Mexicans are city guys. And so we don't get along yeah. somehow. And so we're, you know, yeah. But anyway, so like um, another way is like, if you have bad paperwork, so like if you're if you have any kind of crime, like a, a against a woman, like a rape or uh, against a kid, and they find out, they'll they will oust you. They'll you know. Like I you, enjoy that rule. Yeah. So this guy, I can't remember his name, but he had been in for he was doing like 15 years. He'd done eight or something like that. Mm-hmm. Eight years had no problems ever. Someone misidentified his paperwork like someone had the same name as him oh and and so he they said oh you know like we never realized this dude had you know this guy's a a chomo or whatever and two guys came and fucking like i mean tried to kill him like stabbed him over and over he got stabbed a million times you know like and he didn't do it It he survived it wasn't even him damn yeah but then once they got him like that then you know you're like like that's the way you find out that you're kicked out of the gang is, is with someone stabbed. stabbing yeah. you in your gut trying to kill you. It's fucking nice. nuts, man. Nice. That is a society. I mean, like, it's, it's, yeah, I'm good, dude. But um, anywho, Suge is saying, you know, like. Uh, they have their beef from the East Coast, West Coast days. But like him talking about like, oh, you got to go in, you know, standing up. Bro, he's in, he's in PC. Like, yeah. What he said, like he's somewhere in prison where he can make a podcast. Okay, like we'll put it that way. He, he has like a recording studio. Is one hundred percent not on the main line at all. Yeah. Like he's not in general population because I've heard lots of people say that if he was on the main line, he would last one day. That they're mm-hmm. like he has too many enemies. Um, but anyway, so the last What's piece of his advice, brother love thing. That's what he's saying. Is like so he said. He warned Diddy not to use his newest nickname, Brother Love, if he ends up behind that bars. That was one of Diddy's new nicknames? Yeah. He said, do not do your time going what by Brother Love. Brother Love is not a good code name for prison. <laughs> I mean, you think? <laughs> yeah. Even I would have known that. Yeah. But Diddy, like, I don't know. I mean, Diddy's going to have resources in prison, like, e- even if... Of course. I they'll mean, probably put him in PC just because of who oh, he is. Oh, they'll put him in PC for sure. Yeah. He, you can't put a guy like that in, in general population. They're going to... They'll mm-hmm. touch him for sure. For 100%. Just even strike. just for the, um, the notoriety, crowd. yes, of doing 100%. it. 100%. Yeah. That's why they can't put them out there. Like, Lil Wayne, I think he had to do eight months or something in, like, and you know, PC. I, I don't know about Tupac when he was in, but I, I would imagine, you know, PC, because, mm-hmm. like... These guys that are in there are fucking lunatics. Like when Christian was doing his thing, he told me stories like about the reason that he got transferred out of the facility that he was in the first one is because he was in. um, So he was obviously clicked with the white guys because he's California. And And this friend of ours is not someone that you would miss in a crowd, bro. (laughs) Like He's what? Six. He's. He was Three? one, and I would imagine in prison, he was one of the most formidable people, like, because he knows how to fight too. Like, he's like trained, you know, like, I've seen him. I saw and him, has, yeah. I saw him grapple our friend Ryan one time, who's 300 pounds to play college football, and he fucking arm barred him seven times in a row. Our guy, like, the guy, the 300 pounder could not figure out how he was doing it. And like, uh, and, it was great. Yeah. But Chris is, he know he's a better striker than grappler too. He taught me how to do leg kicks. Yeah. So anyway, so he's like in jail. Tell him he'll yeah. fucking mop any of these just guys. in any crowd though he stands out like a sore thumb He's so huge. like if anyone was going to be like oh we like want to lay claim over that guy we're going to pick on somebody it's going to be this guy because he just stands Dude, out like he, a sore thumb he's me plus about i don't know 35 40 pounds of he's muscle. huge and and he's also four inches taller than me he's gigantic so yeah he's enormous and he was in a facility where there i don't i don't know how many black guys or i'm sorry how many white guys there were but there was like you know less than everybody else and there was this guy one of the white guys who was there was like 65 years old he's like an old man you know like uh and this he said that this 19 year old ms13 guy which technically as far i'm pretty sure ms13 is sereno in prison you know because they're like they're there's i think that but anyway so like that guy said that he was going to that him and his buddy were going to beat the fuck out of this 65 year old like they put it out there you know that they were going to get that guy 
And Christian was like, nobody, no. nobody's touching that guy. And he's like, hey, let them know nobody's fucking touching this guy. And the administration found out about it and they transferred him. And they wow. were like the transfer. I mean, um, and then so he ended up doing they they did like they transferred him to like a place that was like for. And for good. the record, when I was saying some smart people end up in prison, he's kind of one of the people I was talking about. He's a fucking fluke, though. I mean, actually, that's not even true, dude. He had the, one of the guys that he did time with, uh, he introduced me to. He was a smart guy, too, that like. Yeah, my our, dad, too. Our, our friend, like our friend, Mensa, Rob Banks. like super fucking smart. Yeah. Christian Rob Banks. <laughs> smartly. Still, yeah, smartly until he got got. I can't even imagine how many he probably really did, yeah. but, um, but yeah, so he, uh, he got transferred to a, a place that was like a federal, that, like there was, it's like a place where most people do, uh, weekend DUI, uh, mm-hmm. and they had eight federal prisoners and he was one of them. So it's like the fucking, he had like the, a bedroom the, the and cushiest, like a phone and a TV he and like, te- yeah, he would text me pictures of him, of a laptop and a bottle of Patron. Yeah. In this place, but, but that place got ra- California tax dollars. That place got raided by the feds. Oh. That place got raided by the feds because there was uh, one of the guards or the whole the all the guards were bringing in drugs and selling them to people, and someone nice. dimed them, and so nice. they actually had the the doors kicked in, and all the fucking guards were. put on the ground That's with so all the prisoners. Crazy. Yeah, and then he got sent to. Uh, he was there for that. Yeah, oh, then, he got, then he got sent to Lompoc for the rest of it. Ooh. Thanks for hanging out, you guys. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and you'll know next time me and my beautiful wife put out more episodes of Play With Matches.